Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me. Let's spend a few minutes painting some sand dunes for some real pretty sea oats on top of them. In fact, we're going to paint a couple layers of sand dunes so you get that nice modeling of color between the two. And just get some really interesting techniques for using a brush to create the, uh, the effect of sea oats and also depth as you go across one dune, down through the dip, and up the next. It's the same technique we use for painting snow. Actually, we're just, what we're trying to do is just kind of shadow and shade in the area between the two dunes to give the effect of three dimension, like you can walk across one, down through the dip, and up the next. And while the paper is still wet, we'll of course use a bristle brush, one of my stiff bristle brushes, to put in some very uh, realistic, effective uh, clumps of grass and sea oats. What I'm going to do first is a very quick little pencil sketch. And I'm doing this just to give myself an idea where the sea oats are going to be, where the sand dunes, for example, here's a dune right here. Comes down and maybe there's another one comes in like this. And the ocean would probably be back here. Now, we're not going to have time to paint the ocean, but we're going to do the sea oats. There is another uh, free demo on how to paint the ocean waves in the surf, so if you have a chance, be sure to watch that. You can combine these two together and paint a seascape. Let's start by wetting the paper. I'm going to wet everything from the sky on down to the top of the dune. You see I'm going up around it. And I'm also going to wet some of the areas in the interior of the dune. I'm leaving the area at the top of the dune dry because that's where I want to assure that the slope of the sea, uh, the, the uh, sand dune, and also I want that nice uh, wet area at the top so I can get that nice wet on wet look with the sea oats. Now let's start by painting the sea oats first. I'm taking one of my stiff bristle brushes. This is a one inch uh, Sterling Edwards uh, blending and glazing brush. It's a very, very stiff hog bristle, synthetic hog bristle, and it holds a lot of paint. Let's start by taking some steel to grain brown which is a, a very rich, clean, transparent brown. We're putting just a little bit of a cupric green deep into it, so it has just a nice earthy green. Let's start right here at the top of this dune and start suggesting there's some sea oats. You notice that's dry paper right there, whereas the sea oats at the top, they're hitting the wet paper. So you get that nice, soft, wet look along the top, but then you have a nice, drier shape down along the bottom. Let's do some more of them. This is a very easy technique. It's a very easy way to paint this, this effect of getting the sea oats. We got that nice soft edge. Now after it dries, we can come back. We'll put a little bit more uh, definition on top of those. But in the meantime, let's put a few down here. Then I'm taking that brush and I'm literally holding it almost parallel to the paper. I'm, taking, I'm holding it parallel and just very lightly pulling it up. Look at that nice dry brush and all those pretty textures you can get. This thing just lays in the color so beautifully. Now let's vary the color a little bit. I want sun to be more brown, sun to be more green. Let's see if we can't just get in there and just really make this look like it's a pretty well established area. Down here where the paper is dry, I can hold that brush and get these nice dry brush effects that look like a lot of sea oats and grass sticking up. I can also come in at the base of these with a little bit darker color while they're still damp. Gives me a chance to add even more texture and dimension and color to it. So keep moving back and forth with the color. We don't want these all to be brown. For example, this is getting too brown right in here. Let's see if we can't add a little more green to it. The green gives me a chance to add a second color. It also makes it a little bit darker, which gives the piece much more intrigue. And that's a good place to stop with the sea oats. Now I'm going to stop and dry the paper very quickly with the hair dryer. And then we're going to come in and we're going to start suggesting the, uh, the actual sand in itself. And I'm going to show you how they make these little dips in the sand that look like they have sea oats growing out of them. It's a very, very neat technique because it gives it a very three-dimensional look. But you can see already just how quickly, using the right brush, we are able to go in there and create the sea oats. It has a nice uh, dry on dry look. Also a nice wet on wet look. Just a nice variety of textures. So let's get the dryer out and see what we can do, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I totally dried the paper. Now, it's, it's important to, to know when to stop and dry the paper and when to keep working. I know I want to come in here right now and start modeling the sand a little bit to give it some dimension and give it some, uh, some volume, but I also knew that these were very wet shapes, and I don't want the two to run together. I want to keep them separated, so to play it safe, 
take a few minutes and dry the paper. It's time well spent. Now let's go ahead and start modeling the sand a little bit. Now before I start putting paint down, I want to have this brush clean and ready. This is a one inch soft, I mean, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a one inch stiff bristle brush and I'm squeezing most water out of it. That brush is barely damp. It's damp enough that I can move paint but not introduce water to my paper. So that's the key. You want it just barely, barely damp to the touch. Let's see if we can't mix some color up that we can use for the various levels of the dune. Here I'm taking some brown steel to grain, putting a tiny bit of violet with it. I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of blue in it. I'm just looking for a nice, pretty, uh, kind of a sandy gray color. A little more blue, maybe. Now the key is, I want these dunes to look like you can go up and over and across and all that. So we're going to just start, start doing some very soft modeling. For example, I want this dune, this dune to be separate from that one. So I'm just coming in right along the t bottom, putting a little color and coming in to lose that top edge. It starts taking on a lot of volume when I do that. Do the same thing right along in here. And again, just very lightly, kind of losing that top edge. And every time I blend an edge, I wipe that brush off. I'm picking up a lot of paint doing that. So it's important to keep that edge pretty clean. Now right in here, for example, we're going to just put a little bit, come in and lose the top edge. If that were wet paint on those pieces of grass, I would have a mess right now. But as it is, I did take the time to dry it, so we're playing it safe. Now down at the bottom, let's just really put some color in this area just to kind of show that there's more suggestion of movement in the dunes. And again, I'm just taking that damp brush and kind of moving it around a little bit, blending some edges, giving that dune lots of volume. So now we feel like we can kind of walk up and across the dunes and, and over the dunes and so forth. Now in the process of doing this, I also wet those areas. Those dunes are wet shapes where I did the blending. So let's just take advantage of that while that's wet. Get the bristle brush out again. We already had the color mixed with the dunes. So let's pop a few more suggestions of grass in here. Just in a few places. In fact, I think I'm going to put a large clump of grass down the very corner here, just to kind of help close in the bottom of the painting. Now I talked about coming up here doing more work on these. I've got that same green-blue combination, green-brown combination. This is a still to grain brown with the Cupid green mixed with it. Let's come in here now on this dry paper, put a few more suggestions of some individual uh, blades of grass and see how it's kind of sticking up. You can always give them a little curve if you want to, like the wind's blowing. And what you wind up with is just a very convincing uh, representation of some sea oats. The only thing that needs to be done now is just take a small brush. I'm using a rigger for this. I mean, I'm sorry, number four around. I'm just putting a few little suggestions of individual little tufts of oats and seed pods and so forth. Don't do too many of these. You can just totally kill a painting with too many. We're trying to put just enough that it tells the viewer what it is, but we're not trying to overwork it. Put just enough that people look at that and they'll know those are sea oats without getting too, uh, too heavy with the brush. Sometimes less is more, especially with watercolors. I hope that gives you some ideas. Like I said, if you have a chance, look at the free demo for doing ocean waves and surf. If you were to take this scene right here and use my next exercise, my other exercise of showing how to paint waves back here, pop a very quick sky in, you got a nice seascape. Hope you find this interesting. If you have a chance, look at my website, sterlingedwards.com. Check the calendar while you're there. I might be coming to your town for a workshop soon. Thank you. <music>